how do you ensure data is high quality? We, we say we want to serve high quality data to people. It's, it's, it, it is the value it is for a reason because it's been you know back tested and made a choice. How do you make those choices? Brandon, can you uh, speak a little bit to that? Like when you guys are, are creating a feed or a price point, what are some of the elements that go into that decision making? Yeah, sure. And it starts really on the data collection side, right? There's, as, as we've all stated, there's many exchanges, new ones coming out, decentralized, centralized every day, right? How do we bring in that data and ensure that we're comparing apples to apples when, when we're doing any type of, you know, analytics or aggregate pricing, right? Um, you know, basic example is just Bitcoin, right? There are some exchanges that call it XBT, some call it BTC. How do you bring that in and just normalize that so that you call, call it a single instrument and you can compare that across the many different um, exchanges and data points that you're receiving, right? So for example, on our side, we have over 20 billion data points coming into our system today. We're scaling, you know, we're, we scale and normalize all of that in near real time with, you know, the DX feed partners that we have, right? And when we bring in that data, not only do we normalize it, we then have to ensure that the outliers aren't there. Did a bad data point come through, right? Um, could be anything from an additional digit to maybe a decimal place that was moved, you know, a little bit, right? So the precision becomes something that we have to look at. And, you know, to John's point, having that operational process Right, that that we have having both automated and you know human process looking at it. That's what really brings that institutional grade data quality to um, to the the industry. And uh, you know that's been done in the traditional markets for many many years. And you know we're we're seeing that in the uh, digital asset and cryptocurrency markets as well. Yeah, I mean the same things that that apply to how do you find a BTC price also apply to forex prices and asset prices and all these there, there's even right. more exchanges right and so uh, uh dimitri can you speak a little bit to that yeah. I, I in your video about um building market data from some forex prices i think you did a conference and i'm going to link that down below because it's great, <laughs> a great deep dive for some of our developers to see really like how you guys go about creating these but feel free to speak to that yeah, so, so when we're talking about Forex, as it's also a decentralized market. Uh, so, of course, we are facing the same challenges, as you already mentioned, like that. So the spreads can be unpredictable. So that can be any types of outliers. And uh, so in general, yeah, we introduced some kind of engine which allows us to, I don't know, effectively process all this in real time and provide with a reference feed which can be reliably used in a different kind of applications. Uh, when we are talking about the some traditional market, even the US stocks market, so that's basically the question when I receive every day. So can you provide us with a reliable, I don't know, Apple price? But uh, for example, not many people knows that every US stock is trading on like 17 exchanges in the United States. and so when you want to create a product, so you have to take into account not only the pricing information, but the licensing challenges, the use cases, and uh, know the market quite well. And uh, so when you own this expertise, so you can build quite an interesting tailored products uh, for, for different use cases. And for Luca, uh, for, no, for Chainlink, uh, for example, where introduced a very special setup of a US stocks fee, which allows us to keep it license free, but from the other hand, provide a uh, original product from uh, US stock exchanges. I don't know if anybody does this today. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, so that's, that's fantastic, right? You know, that that's at Chainlink Labs, what we're trying to build is the, the rails between good data and smart contracts. And so the more good data we can get to smart contracts, Forex data, asset data, stocks, whatever it is, that we love that because it, that gives people an opportunity to build and be creative and, and do different kinds of things. But you guys are also firmly planted in the traditional